Thank you. Thank you so very much for tuning in to this month installment of the 19 Report. I am your host, Brother Johnny. Johnny, I walked a thin line between right and wrong. Took my fears to God, then I wrote this song. The spirit kept calling, so I answered the phone. And then I manned up and got some backbone. My mind resonates at a much higher tone. Solid foundation, empire zone. Three mountains, I'm in one. Right to left counted, nine and then one. Left to right, switch it, one and then nine. West to east, south to north, a thin line. I know Christ exists, because his mercy allows me a chance to stand three on a square. Yeah, we in there. Thank you so very much for tuning in. This is Brother Johnny of the 19 Report, Manning, South Carolina. And I hope you will stay with us for a few minutes today as we talk about today's hot topics. I wanted to get directly into it. First of all, I want to ask the question, uh, maybe something that we can ponder on as we uh, go through these different topics for today. <clears throat> Do you find it ironic that uh, at a time when the country is kind of in a uproar and, and divided amongst itself, how these private meetings that were once private, that would stay private, that the uh, average person would never know anything about, immediately after the meetings now, the people are beginning to come out and tell what is going on in the meetings. They're beginning to come out and share information with us about private things that were once private. Now, the Quran talks about, um, and, the, and the Bible talks about, all of these private meetings that we would have. And how where there is one, God would be the second. Where there's two, God would be the third. Or someone in the midst would be there in order to keep us abreast to what's going on outside of our, our view. What we do with this information is very important in, in this day and time. Rather, we can do anything personally, or rather, we can just take the information and share it online with other people. Or, more importantly, ask Almighty God to balance out what's going on in the things that we aren't able to control now. These answers won't come immediately. But I want to share four things with you today, our four topics for the day. Number one is uh, President Trump, President Donald Trump's comments about Haiti. Then we want to go into the Oprah Winfrey speech at the Golden Globe Awards, I believe, and everyone thinking she should be voted in now as a candidate for the 2020 presidential election. And the statements that Seal, the singer Seal, made about Oprah Winfrey, and is he justified in saying it? Is he right in saying it? Also, the H&M controversy, was it taken out of context and out of uh, the realms of what it really was? The mother of the black model who wore the shirt that said uh, uh, something about the ape and the monkey, the king monkey in the jungle or whatever, and I'm paraphrasing, seems to think that it, it was taken out of control out of context. And finally, I wanted to say a few things about Family Guy, uh, something that happened. Uh, and usually these shows have prediction type parodies in them where, where um, uh, Peter Griffin was making a comment or a catchphrase and he was arrested for the catchphrase. And then he made another catchphrase and he was put in the electric chair for making that catchphrase. So are we coming to a period where uh, in, in the United States where words and suggestions and quotes that we use from someone else could get us into trouble? I don't know the exact political term for it, but let's go into this um, comment, these statements by uh, Senator Dick Durbin. And again, I hope this is not too loud. Um, I try to stop the sound. The first topic of the day. The comments of Senator Dick Durgan were going to play in its entirety. It's three minutes and 38 seconds. So let's go into that right now. The president came into the Oval Office, and Senator Lindsey Graham and I made our presentation. We have been working for four months, six senators, three Democrats, and three Republicans, to, cre to create a bipartisan way to deal with the crisis we face, where more than 700,000 uh, dreamers protected by DACA are going to lose that protection starting March 5th of this year by a thousand a day. As Senator Graham made his presentation, 
The president interrupted him several times with questions and in the course of his comments uh, said things which were hate-filled, vile, and racist. I use those words advisedly. I understand how powerful they are. But I cannot believe that in the history of the White House, in that Oval Office, any president has ever spoken the words that I personally heard our president speak yesterday. You've seen the comments in the press. I have not read one of them that's inaccurate. To no surprise, the president started tweeting this morning denying that he used those words. It is not true. He said these hate-filled things, and he said them repeatedly. When the question was raised about Haitians, for example, we have a group that have temporary protected status in the United States because they were the victims of crises and disasters and political upheaval. The largest group is El Salvador, and the second is Honduran, and the third is Haitian. And when I mentioned that fact to him, he said, Haitians, do we need more Haitians? And then he went on and we started to describe the immigration from Africa that was being protected in this uh, bipartisan measure. That's when he used these vile and vulgar comments, calling the nations they come from the exact word used by the president, not, for, not just once, but repeatedly. Uh, that was the nature of this conversation. When it came to the issue of, quote, chain migration, I said to the president, do you realize how painful that term is to so many people? African Americans believe that they migrated to America in chains. And when you speak about chain migration, it hurts them personally. And he said, oh, that's a good line. And then when I talked to him about the impact this has on family unification in a nation that values families with the flag as the most important symbols of our future, they scoffed at this notion. It was a heartbreaking moment. But I will tell you this, I'm not going to quit. I have a singular mission, and the mission is this, to give these dreamers and as many members of their families as possible a chance to be part of America's future in a legal status. I am convinced that there's a majority in both the House and the Senate of Democrats and Republicans who support that concept. I know there's an overwhelming majority of Americans who support that concept. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to prepare our bipartisan agreement for introduction into the Senate next week. If the Republican leadership has a better alternative, bring it forward. If they don't, for goodness sakes, give us a vote. I'll be on the phone today with my Republican colleagues and my Democratic colleagues, begging them to support this measure. Time is running out. We have to get this done. Okay, there you have it. That was the comments made by Senator Dick Durbin uh, in the meeting with President Donald Trump and talking about what he heard the president say in terms of third world countries being get right to that growing fire united by those um, Haiti being number three in those third world countries uh, that are going through very very troubling times at this time. So Senator Dick Durbin talking about the bipartisan vote, I believe. I'm not very politically astute. I've never been one to believe that politics really solve problems on a grand scale. But I do believe that on a uh, personal level, uh, on a community level, state level, perhaps politics are, are able to, to uh, assist us in many ways, especially in terms of policies that affect people as a whole. So did Donald Trump say what he said about um, Haiti and third world countries? Perhaps he did, uh, perhaps he didn't. Uh, but we will keep an eye on that. That is one of the topics of the day that I hope we will be very, very focused on. This is the time in which we need to be focused on what's being done and why it's being done. Now, the second topic I want to talk about today is the issue with Oprah Winfrey and the speech that she made at the Golden Globe Awards. Um, of course, that excited a lot of people, made a lot of people want to jump on board. We just, we get so excited with words. Even though these words have been written by writers, these situations in most cases are scripted, 
we get so excited with words and the person who delivers the words. And we get so excited by the persona of the individual that I stated earlier, we live vicariously through these people as if you know, something they do or say is going to affect us on a positive. We did that with President Barack Obama, thinking that immediately as a black president stepped into office, life would get better for black people, but it didn't. And it still is not. Uh, and it's not even good for most people, period. So I wanted to go into this a little bit about. Oprah Winfrey, and the statement that the singer Seal made um, about Oprah Winfrey being aware that Harvey Weinstein and of his of Harvey Weinstein and his sexual misconduct. Uh, the heading in many of the papers today reads: Seal accuses Oprah of knowing about Harvey Weinstein's sexual misconduct. Then it goes into uh, detail about how a Seal, the singer, knew that Oprah knew about what was going on with Weinstein. Now, as I stated on one another occasion, they did the Me Too project where everyone wore black in um, solidarity of the disrespect shown to women and men. You know, Terry Crews talked about how he was molested, many men as well. And they are considered to be heroes at this time, but this is like bandwagon jumping, like everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now. These things have been happening before. But my caution to everyone is that don't, don't be so quick to allow what comes out of a person's mouth to be the last judgment of your viewpoint of that individual. Because words are one thing. Well done is much better than well said. We are very uh, caught up in finances and wealth. So anyone with wealth and finance, we give them a pass. I'm talking about the poor people. I'm talking about the middle class people who, if they miss one day of work, will lose everything. We're so eager to give them a pass on their evil and so quick to jump on the bandwagon when they say one thing of value. Now, granted, saying things can motivate people, but what a person does will cause more damage than what they say in the long run, in most cases. Okay, so. Seal accuses Oprah of knowing about Harvey Weinstein's sexual misconduct. Well, then what did Seal know? All of these years that this went on, if he's accusing Oprah of knowing, did he know? And why, is, why did he not speak out against it? See, this can go on like the, uh, the, the, the proverbial, for proverbial rabbit hole. Just how deep does the hole go? And I caution us to be very careful when we're dealing with celebrities, and, and people of status and statue, stature, very, very careful with people like that because they are chosen to do what they're doing. And we are in an experiment in this country where they are constantly putting people before us to see who we flock to. If you haven't noticed, Carter B has taken the position of Nicki Minaj. Minaj is no longer notori notor not uh, notori a notoriety uh, entity or novelty, but Carter B looks like her, acts like her, dresses like her, and now just as quick as Nicki Minaj was a star, Carter B has taken her place. It's just as simple as that. It's an easy thing, like um, um, making us to follow whatever those in authority want us to follow. So I caution us to be very careful in that regard. Now, the third thing that I would like to discuss on today's topic, 2016, is the H&M um, situation with the picture of the black boy dressed in a um, shirt that says, uh, the king monkey of the jungle or something to that effect. Well, his mother is, is saying, it says, coolest monkey in the jungle. Well, his mother is saying that she doesn't know what the uproar is about. She doesn't mind that her son is wearing the shirt. So why are people so um, in an uproar about her son wearing a shirt that says, coolest monkey in the jungle, whereas the Caucasian boy who was wearing in that same ad was wearing something about being the king of the jungle with the lion on the shirt. 
of something or something to that effect. Now, H&M has since apologized and allegedly pulled the ad from the air and allegedly are not no longer selling the shirt. But it has been reported that they are still selling the shirt in Spain and in other countries where you, the United States is not fully aware of what's going on. So the apology is frivolous. The apology is empty. I don't think they will ever take responsibility for what they perceived as not being harmful. Again, anything that is visual or verbal pertaining to black people after our sojourn in this country of slavery is offensive. But as I said in one commentary on last week, and I posted up again, that we are suffering from post-traumatic slavery disorder because it is not okay in our minds for a black, for a white person to make derogatory statements towards us in any way we get offended. At the same time, we call each other nigger as a term of endearment. So that is a cross contradiction of words and no one feels as if though they would have to apologize to us for anything said or done when we have little to no respect for ourselves. That's my view on that. And finally, I wanted to, and I hope they don't flag me for this, but I was watching a clip of Family Guy on, uh, on, on la uh, probably a few nights ago, I couldn't sleep, and I was watching a clip on Family Guy. And in the clip, um, there are always predictions about what's going to be happening in the future, and sometimes they're very close to the truth. But in this particular clip, um, what is his name? The father. The father's name is um, Peter. Peter Griffin comes into the room. Brian is, has throw up all over him. And Peter makes the statement, what's the matter? You, have you fallen and can't get up? And when he made that statement, it immediately flashed to him being in jail. And he said, I didn't know that it was against the law to use old terms. And then he says in jail, I better be careful not to drop the soap. And when he said that, he appeared in the electric chair. And he says, apparently, it's, it's not legal to use any catchphrase. So I'm wondering if, if we're coming into a dictatorship like 1984, where books and words and catchphrases and everything that we want to express is going to be illegal. It's like how talking about homosexuality, all of a sudden, it's illegal. Talking about the biblical ramifications of it, it's illegal, and they put it in law where you can't talk about it. And also, talking about our political agreements or disagreements, or talking about how we disagree with individuals, is becoming like a, um, a restrict, a, a law that we can no longer say what's on our mind. And if you ever watch the Minority Report with Tom Cruise, the, the whole object of that movie was that they would arrest people for thoughts that they had in their mind, for thought crime. So here it is, this clip, I'm going to play it. Um, uh, this is Family Guy, and I'm going to play this clip real quick and cut it. So here we go. Hey, what's the matter, Brian? Have you fallen and can't get up? Turns out still using that joke is a felony. Guess I better not drop the soap. That one's the death penalty. Let's hold it, one. Okay, so there you see, right there, there's a quick clip. And while we're being entertained by the things that are being said, uh, a lot of times those clips are telling us about future things, what's happening, and what will be happening. So I am cautioning us to be very careful in 2018. We are coming into a, um, uh, uh, a state where I don't know what to call it politically, but a fascist state and what's above fascism, where you are a dictatorship, we are coming to that point. So I caution everyone to be very careful what you agree with, who you vote into office, who you want to be in charge of things. And again, this is the eighth anniversary of and I hate to say it in that way because it's not something that you celebrate in a glorious way, but the eighth anniversary of the uh, massive earthquake in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, uh, on the heels of that, um, reports are being made that Donald Trump 
made derogatory statements pertaining to third world countries, which was Haiti, El Salvador, and another country, Haiti being number three, and um, also the Clinton administration being investigated for what they did with billions of dollars of funding that was sent to Haiti to help Haiti get back on its feet. Uh, all of the con contributions of Haiti to the world, the Haitian people, the Gullah people uh, being disregarded. And meanwhile, while that is going on, something else is going on with the president in the White House talking about president, uh, talking about Dr. Martin Luther King and, and him ushering in. I don't know what the bill is. I was looking at it, but I didn't get to complete it. We, we got to be very cautious of the things that are quote unquote given to us to keep us silent in the times where we should be vocal. This is 2018 and we should be very vocal. Uh, I think this is the last stand that we will have in terms of being able to say what's on our mind as net neutrality comes into play. And every time you come on the internet trying to go live, especially me, I just, everything falls apart. The video speeds up, slows down, breaks apart. But it looks very clear on my end because we're using very up-to-date, high-end uh, recording equipment, but it's just not flowing through properly on Facebook or YouTube. So I thank you for tuning in to this installment of the 19th Report. Again, topics of the day, January 12, 2018. And I hope that we will take very precautionary measures in the time that we live. Again, you are not helpless. I, 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 I'm praying that prayer helps. And I'm praying that God will answer the collective prayers of the people because we honestly need it. We're in a time where blacks in particular are not very savvy in politics and understanding the political arena. And those who do understand it are not necessarily sharing the information for our benefit, but they're sharing the information to get a higher, uh, a higher hold on the political scene. Thank you again for tuning in, Brother Johnny Group 19 Promotions. The 19 Report, please join up with us at the 19 Network on Facebook and at the 19 Photographics on Facebook and at Jamil Salib on Instagram and the 19 Report on YouTube and also the 19 Report personal website on the internet. Put us into your Google search, and we are pretty high in our rankings. Thank you all for tuning in. Brother Johnny, The 19 Report. Thank you. Thank you so very much for tuning in to this month's installment of The 19 Report. I am your host, Brother Johnny. Johnny, I walked a thin line between right and wrong. Took my fears to God, then I wrote this song. The spirit kept calling, so I answered the phone. And then I manned up and got some backbone. My mind resonates at a much higher tone. Solid foundation, empire zone. Three mountains, I'm in one. Right to left counted, nine and then one. Left to right switch it, one and then nine. West to east, south to north, a thin line. I know Christ exists, because his mercy allows me a chance to stand three on a square yeah we in there